Hi, my name is Tom Johnson, and today I'm going to talk about how trends in API documentation differ from other TechCom trends. Um, at the turn of the year, back in December, I was kind of sitting around thinking that I wanted to write a post about trends, and I was trying to come up with what to say. And uh, I started looking at what other research had been done around trends. What had people already written? And I looked at existing surveys. Uh, there was a, a TechCom census by Saul Carliner that was very extensive across the broad TechCom industry. Another really good survey by Scott Abel, uh, a benchmarking survey. But I was a little frustrated by some of the results in these trends. It looked like uh, the 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 picture that these trends painted didn't seem to square with the trends I was seeing in the developer doc space. For example, um, the trends indicated that 76% of people used Word or Google Docs, that 31% used help authoring tools or hats, that 30% used FrameMaker, that 20% were using a component content management system, 14% using Dita, and I was like, you know, I just am not seeing this in other uh, tech pubs groups that are creating documentation for developers. And I wondered, you know, how do the trends differ? And has anybody ever surveyed just this segment of the population? So I decided to create a survey of my own, focusing only on developer documentation. That is, people who are writing documentation that is intended primarily for developers, engineers, or the, the sort. I had 50 questions in the survey. It took people about nine to 10 minutes to complete. There were mostly multiple choice, although there were a couple of free form. And I promoted this survey on my blog, on Twitter, and LinkedIn. After a couple of months, 406 people completed the entire survey. Uh, actually, 855 started, 337 dropped out. So there's actually a range in the number of, of responses, but 406 made it to the end and hit submit. Uh, but the others were still counted as well. It took people nine minutes and the distribution was pretty broad across uh, the world. It wasn't just the US, but included a good chunk of people from India, Germany, Great Britain, and so on. The results are public, and you can go to this site uh, or go to this link, and you can see the results, and you're welcome to kind of dive into them. You know, trying to sort through survey results can be pretty challenging. You know, 400 plus responses, so many different factors. I'm not uh, an academic trained in kind of survey analysis, but I think when you have 400 responses, it's kind of hard to argue against some trends. So... Let's get into some of these trends. I divided the questions after the survey into five different categories. Tools, outputs, processes, API, and just kind of the general profile of the respondents. Let's jump into the first section, tools, because this is a section that I think most people are really curious about. I mean, tools in the developer doc space are hard to navigate. There are a ton of different tools. It's confusing to know which, which to use, especially for your API docs, how you integrate them with your tutorial docs, and so on. So the first question is, what is your primary authoring tool for creating documentation? And I had different categories. And the trending category is static site generator tools, such as Jekyll, Hugo, Gatsby, Sphinx. Um, and you can see some other, other trends as well. Uh, but 22% of the people um, is pretty pretty interesting there. You can see that FrameMaker was only at 2.73%. So this varies pretty dramatically from those other surveys. I followed up this question with, with a free form question. You know, what specific tool are you, are you using rather than these general buckets? And you can see the, the number of, of responses. Um, a lot of people use Confluence, Oxygen XML, Flare, Microsoft Word, Hugo, Jekyll. And I'll get into a little bit of the analysis of trying to sort through this answer uh, in a bit. Another question, if you write content in a text editor, what editor do you mainly use? Most people use Visual Studio Code, 
or Atom, or just Notepad++. What's the most common source format? Markdown, by far, uh, leads the pack with around 30, 37%, uh, followed by HTML and then XML. Um, in general, do you follow a docs as code approach where you treat documentation similar to how developers treat code? And overwhelmingly, around 56% of the people said, yes, they do. And this is a huge difference, right? This is a, this is a whole philosophy and methodology that's dramatically different from other tech com spaces. What software do you use to create graphics and screenshots and visuals? Most people just use Snagit, but there are a lot of different tools people are using. Um, and you, you can see a long list here if you dig through the results. What platform do you use to host and publish documentation, especially to provide continuous integration and delivery? And most people just use their company's own web servers or infrastructure to publish their documentation. I mean, there are some people using GitHub, uh, GitLab, but by and, by and large, people are just using the same infrastructure as their company's engineers use. What kind of computer do you, you, do you use? Uh, Windows 55, 54%, Mac 40%. So pretty evenly split. I mean, uh, I kind of wondered if a lot more people were using Mac, but not so much. How do you manage your content? Most people manage their content using Git, 67%, right? So this is a really, this is a huge category, right? Uh, because Git is a, is a complex workflow, or it can be. It's super flexible. Uh, it's the same workflow engineers use. And uh, it's the, the primary way people are managing all their content, different versions, collaboration, uh, kicking off builds and everything. All right, so now I wanna reflect a little bit on how we unpack some of this, uh, some of these responses about tools. I think there, there are different tools for different scenarios, right? You have a collaboration scenario where you're trying to collaborate on content with others and develop it. And in those scenarios, maybe you use something like Microsoft Word. You also have tools that you use for internal content. Maybe you, you know, docs just for internal teams and maybe you use a tool like Confluence. Then you have another category of tools that you're using to assemble and publish out your content. And maybe you use a static site generator for that, such as Hugo. And then there's another category of tools that you're using to edit your content, where you write and edit, uh, and maybe that's Visual Studio Code. And then another tool that you're using to manage your content, you know, push it and collaborate it and store it and so forth, um, that's usually Git. And then another category of tool that you're using to publish and deploy your content, maybe your company's own build system. So there's not just one tool that people use, right? And this is kind of the biggest takeaway is uh, it used to be that kind of people, people in techcom, you could identify what tool they were using. And that tool was an all-in-one sort of publishing, uh, authoring publishing solution, authoring publishing collaboration all packed in one, kind of like a Swiss army knife. But now there's not just a single tool for authoring a review and publishing. You have a lot of different tools that are used for different purposes. And if you want to see some examples, check out this Jamstack site with some links. It shows all the different tools people use. Uh, and I also realized that the term tool itself is pretty ambiguous. You know, is the tool the editor? Is it the, the markdown? Is it the static site generator? Is it the build and deployment system? Is it the internal review tools? I mean, if you have six different tools you're using in your authoring and publishing solution, it's unclear uh, what response you should provide when you say, when people ask, what tool do you use? And some people don't seem to be using any tools at all, right? If you're a developer working in the dev doc space, and your primary uh, output is code annotations in the existing code, and you're just using your IDE, such as IntelliJ uh, IDEA, to, to, or, or your other uh, Java IDEs and so forth, it's not really apparent uh, what response these people should say when you ask them what tool they're using. It's like, no, I'm just writing Markdown in, as code annotations in my existing editor. I also found that a lot of people 
kind of treat Markdown like a standard such as Dita. The tool is kind of irrelevant because it's used to sort of port the content from one tool or site to another. Um, it's, it's emerging as the standard uh, that a lot of tools can operate in. I also think that, that one could make a case that the tools influence content. If you look at the history of authoring tools in the tech comm space, when people converted to the web, they started creating more, more articles. Uh, before that, when they were writing big, long PDFs, it was more of a book format. When people um, embraced wikis, they sort of uh, had more feedback loops in the content. Um, when people when people started writing in Dita, they had a lot of chunks of content that were kind of small fragments of the whole. Uh, when people adopted CCMSs, they started you know, taking into account multi-channel scenarios. And now with this docs as code approach, I think we're seeing more developer collaboration and, and input. Um, I have an article that you can read if you want more uh, kind of exploration of this content. Um, how you write influences what you write. It's kind of a, in my opinion, a, a controversial statement, right? Um, you know, if you pick up a pencil, does that differ? That does the output of what you create with that differ from what you would create with a keyboard? You know, the same kind of concept. All right. So the emerging picture with tools is that writers primarily are using uh, for internal early content development, common tools such as Confluence, Word, Google Docs. But then they assemble and build their docs using a static site generator like Hugo, Jekyll, Gatsby, MakeDocs. And they work in, a, in an editor such as Visual Studio Code. They publish their content using a docs as code model with Git to trigger a continuous integration, continuous deployment model, often deploying on their company's own servers. And there's also a decent amount of wikis, Oxygen, L, Oxygen XML, and Madcap Flare use. Let's jump into another section of the survey, right? Uh, outputs. I asked, what's the primary output format for your docs? And most people are publishing HTML on the web, but surprisingly, 23% are producing PDF. And this um, ties back to my initial uh, reasons for doing the survey. I wanted to know, are people really generating PDF? You know, is that just a, a relic of the old tech comm space? No, people are actually creating PDFs. Do you create video tutorials or screencasts? Uh, surprisingly, 28% said yes. And only 57% said no, others are planning to create them soon. So there's a lot of people creating video. You know, I, I think there's a common misconception that developers hate video. I've had people uh, stand up and be very adamant that we should never be creating video because developers don't want that. But it's not the case. Now, if you're not creating video and screencasts, why not? Well, some people just don't have the bandwidth or the tech just changes so constantly that video goes out of date soon, or simply because nobody's asked for it. Another question, do your docs plug into a larger development portal? This developer portal you know, organizes docs for a lot of different products, maybe has a unified search, navigation, other features that bring all the docs under one roof. And yeah, 56% of the people are pushing their docs into a developer portal. Do you localize your documentation? 73% do not, which is kind of astounding, right? If you don't have to include localization into your workflow, uh, it frees up your tool set considerably. You don't have to really think more about XML tools because uh, localization isn't a requirement. Another question about PDFs. Do you usually generate out PDFs and distribute them to your audience? So I added another qualifier. And 57% said no, but yeah, 30% this time said yes, they usually generate out PDFs. And about 9% do create PDFs, but only for internal review. You know, the PDFs thing is interesting because uh, a lot of these tool sets, the static site generators, don't don't generate out PDF by default. Uh, Sphinx is an exception. 
So by and large, this presents more complexity for technical writers if they have to generate out PDFs using Docs' code tools. Did you play a significant role in developing and evolving your company's publishing solution? You know, maybe you helped design the site, the workflows, the strategies. And yeah, like 53% of the people said, yes, they are building this out. And only about 20% said no, which is, is interesting because uh, to build out uh, a good looking doc site using some of these static site generator tools is, is not trivial. It's, uh, it requires a UX skill set. So here's the emerging picture when it comes to outputs. Writers are primarily creating, primarily creating web content that fits into a larger developer portal. The writers often help shape and build both the publish, publish, publishing solution and the portal. And localization video tutorials and PDFs aren't overwhelmingly used, but they do constitute about a quarter of the output. Let's move on to a third category of the survey, processes. First question, how do you interact with engineering scrum teams? And about 33% are embedded right on the same teams as scrum teams. Uh, another 27% are, are participants, but in a limited capacity. Maybe they're not counted as full-fledged members with points and demos and everything. Um, others, about 20%, have their own doc scrums. So this is a, a very common sort of pattern to organize tech comm work. How do you review your docs prior to release? You know, this, this question ties back to the PDF as well. And this is kind of amazing. 25% said that they use the same code review tools that engineers use to review uh, software code. So these are, these are your, your code diff tools, the code review tools. Um, and, and I tell you, this is a huge difference uh, because reviewing documentation in a line-by-line -line editor, editor is very different from adding notes in the margins of a PDF or a Google Docs type, type uh, document. But about 13% use Google, Google Docs or Quip. Others use Confluence. 12% use PDFs and so on. Some people, uh, a lot of people, 18% still use in-person meeting, meetings. And this will, this will um, connect with a later question about you know, the biggest challenges people have. And one of them is, is getting engineers to review the content they write. Does your doc publishing, publishing solution have continuous integration and deployment? For example, when you push your content to a certain branch with Git, do builds kick off on a server and push the, push the docs out to production? And 47%, or 48% if you round up, said yes, they do. Uh, you know, so this is actually a question just kind of checking previous question. 33% uh, said no, but this is a huge kind of shift in terms of how uh, docs are, are written and published. The ability to just kick off a couple of commands with Git and all of a sudden your files are in transit being deployed on the server a few minutes later is huge. It is huge. If you've ever had to manually kind of transfer and publish files, you know what a pain that is. Do you outsource any documentation to an offshore agency? Uh, no, 93% do not, right? And this probably speaks... Um, to the intellectual property concerns, uh, especially if you're working with APIs and other kind of developer code, uh, you probably want to keep that internal to the company. Do you have a style guide for your team that standardizes terminology and conventions about style, grammar, and syntax? 77% of the people said, yes, we do. You know, and, and this could be a style guide that you're just adopting from another group. Maybe you like the Microsoft Manual of Style or Google's Developer Style Guide. Uh, but yeah, people aren't just kind of uh, going about it freely and choosing whatever styles they want. When you collaborate with engineers, how do the engineers contribute? Well, about 31% actually uh, say that engineers contribute content through pull requests. Um, Others, about the same number, 
Say that engineers add content to a wiki or similar platform such as Quip and they grab it there. And about 20, 22% say that engineers uh, are direct authors in the version control repository. So an engineer pushes their code in Git just like uh, the other technical writers might be doing. That's kind of an interesting, interesting model. I mean, if you look at why people adopt Docs as code, it's really to unlock collaboration with engineers. And you can see that that 22% of engineers at least are plugged in directly and another 30, 31% are committing pull requests. So yeah, I mean, if you're in this space and you're trying to get information from engineers, this tool set often allows people to collaborate. Here's the emerging picture, right? Writers participate on scrum teams, sometimes in a limited capacity. They review docs using the same tools engineers use to review code. Engineers contribute through through pull requests or through through wikis. The publishing publishing process is streamlined through continuous integration and deployment. And most content is generated within the company rather than outsourced. All right, let's move on to the fourth category in the survey. APIs. Does the documentation you work on usually involve some kind of API? And 81% of the people said yes. So I, I actually really like this question because I often equate developer docs with API docs. And it's true, not all developer docs involve an API. But here you can see that 81% of the time, yeah, if you're working in the dev doc space, it involves some kind of API. So in some ways you can just use these terms dev docs, API docs, somewhat synonymously. What's the most common type of API you work with? REST APIs, 56%. But native library APIs such as Java, C++, these still constitute uh, a sizable amount with 17%. And then a different number of uh, different types of APIs uh, trickle down like SOAP APIs, only around 7%. Uh, GraphQL, it, around 7% as well. So it's interesting, like the API landscape is really pretty broad. So how do you know what to focus on? Well, probably REST and then some native, native library APIs. If you're creating REST API docs, do you use the open API specification? And 47% 40, 40, uh, of the people said yes. 16% um, said no, 15% said sometimes and other people just aren't working with REST APIs. So this is a pretty strong trend, right? Like if you are gonna be working with APIs, you should really know the open API spec because that's how a lot of people just document the, the API. How do you render the open API spec into documentation? Right now, some of these questions, uh, uh, I would probably unpack them more, but basically the open API spec, spec is just a YAML or JSON format describing your API, and then you choose a different tool to pull that information and, and create a interactive, uh, attractive display. And the most common one used is Swagger UI. Uh, Swagger usually refers to the tools around OpenAPI, and there's a free one that's been the standard for a long time, but Redoc is also heavily used with around 8.5%, and a good number of people use internally built tools, around 17% of the people. Do you primarily create the OpenAPI spec manually, or do you auto-generate it from code annotations? This is a huge debate kind of in the community of people working with OpenAPI, and it seems to be somewhat split, around 22% manually create it, and 23% auto-generate it, and, and others do both. Who, who generates out the OpenAPI spec at your company? Primarily the engineers at 36%. Uh, the tech writers only generate this out around six and a half percent of the time. Uh, but often both work on it, tech writers and engineers, around 20, 25% of the time. So uh, this is another key question. Now for reference docs, like Java Doc or Doxygen, who creates this content? Engineers usually create it 32% of the time and tech writers 6% of the time. And there's some collaboration between the two, 27%. Um, this is kind of interesting because like, 
as a tech writer, you may wonder, am I responsible for the reference docs of this? Or is that is that like an artifact engineer should provide as part of their development of the code? And you would not be out of place to just require engineers to provide the reference docs related to either a REST API or a Java API or C++ API. I think that's totally within the bounds of what would be common. You know, most, most tech writers typically uh, are responsible for the tutorials around how to use that content and the engineers might produce the reference. What are the most common programming languages you need to know? Well, uh, JavaScript tops the list at around 24%, followed by Java at 18%, and Python at around 16%. This more or less aligns with popularity of, of programming languages. Which of the following new or trending technologies are you documenting, or will you be documenting this year? So there, there wasn't any overwhelming answer. Uh, some of the big, more common ones are machine learning, big data, AI, um, artificial intelligence, data privacy. Uh, all right, so the emerging picture here is that almost invariably, DevDocs involves an API, and it's usually a REST API. And when you're documenting the REST API, most people use the Open API spec. Both writers and engineers collaborate uh, as they generate out the docs uh, using Swagger UI or a custom parser. And the most important languages to know are JavaScript, Java, and Python. Finally, this last section just has some profile information about the survey participants. Right, the age range was surprisingly evenly distributed. It wasn't as if most people were young 20, 30s or something and everybody else just trickled down. No, there was people all along the spectrum in somewhat even distributions. And the gender split was around even as well. I thought, oh, maybe uh, because programmers tend to be predominantly male, maybe that would reflect in the, the, the tech writers. No, 52% male, 46% female. There were over 200 different companies. Uh, I, I didn't tally up to see who was the most, but uh, we did have a lot of people uh, from different companies. Um, I think there were like nine from Google and so forth, but it wasn't just like one company that predominated. As far as the college degree, 31% of the people have humanities degrees, 28% have engineering degrees, and 15% specifically have tech comm degrees. So this is a good one because... A lot of people think, oh, if you want to if you want to thrive in API API docs, you need to be a former engineer, or you have to have an engineering degree. It's not the case. We got forty five percent of the people with either humanities or tech comm degrees that are working in this space, and around seventy five percent of the people are satisfied with their job. Uh, this correlates with a satisfaction question that Saul Saul asked in his tech comm census. Uh, and he found that about 72% of people are satisfied with their job. So it's roughly on par there. The team size. I wanted to know, you know, are, are most people loan writers? They work in huge teams. 34% of uh, people working in, in API docs are loan writers. And 31% are on small teams of two to four writers. And uh People who are working with five to seven writers, um, there are 12% of those people. The employee type, almost invariably, 86% of the people are full-time. And I ask people, what group do you have the most affinity towards? Write the docs, STC, none. 39% said they feel most affinity towards write the docs. 14% said STC. Uh, a lot of people just don't have affinity towards any groups, really. Um, how much time did you spend learning? Do you spend learning each day just trying to keep up? Around 28% of the people said 30 minutes, 27% of the people said 20 minutes, and 14% of people said 60 minutes. So finally, what are the biggest challenges you face in working with developer docs? Well, the... The technical know-how, understanding the developer technologies to the degree that you need to document uh, is probably one of the big ones at 15%, 16% of the responses. But also um, just finding time, the bandwidth to create all this needed documentation, roughly the same, around 15% of the people said this is a huge challenge. 
Another big challenge was getting reviews, you know, getting adequate reviews uh, to get the engineers to review stuff is a huge challenge. Around 15% of the people said that. And then another big trend here is trying to write docs that address both novice and advanced users. That's a challenge people run into. All right, so those are the results. And hopefully, you know, as you're making your way in this dev doc space, uh, these results give you some validation for maybe the path you're taking, or maybe uh, you realize that you know, what we're doing doesn't seem to align with the trends. But I think understanding trends is helpful because you want to kind of choose your, your tool set and your processes and your formats to be generally in line with what's most common in that space. Uh, the, the skill sets people will ask for in job interviews will better match up. The expectations of the audience and the engineering teams and working with you will better match up. If you're kind of uh, rogue and doing something completely different, you know, kudos for innovation if, if you're innovating, but also recognize that uh, uh, you might run into more um, challenges trying to uh, cut your own path through, through a jungle. So hopefully you can find some of these more well-worn paths and, and uh, find more community, more tools available, more general information about those paths. My name is Tom Johnson. You can find more about uh, me and, and my blog and API docs on idratherbewriting.com. And I've also got an extensive API documentation course you can go through for free on the same site. And feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Tom Johnson or through my email address, tomjoht at gmail.com. Thanks.